Hi, I am Albert Bandura. In this short video, I am going to touch upon my social learning theory, especially, on self-efficacy. Let me begin with the definition of self-efficacy. Self-efficacy, can be defined as, beliefs in one's capabilities to organize and execute courses of action, required to produce given attainments. Self-efficacy determines, how people feel, think, motivate themselves and behave. A strong sense of efficacy enhances human accomplishment and personal well-being in many ways. People with high assurance in their capabilities, approach difficult tasks as, challenges to be mastered, rather than as threats to be avoided. In contrast, people who doubt their capabilities, shy away from difficult tasks which they view as personal threats. They have low aspirations and weak commitment to the goals, that they choose to pursue. Self-knowledge about, one's efficacy is based on, four principal sources of information, which are, performance attainments derived from mastery experiences, vicarious experiences, verbal persuasion, and physiological states. Let's first focus on, an active attainment or, mastery experiences. Personal accomplishments provide, the most influential source of efficacy information because, it is based on authentic mastery experiences. Successes raise efficacy appraisals, whereas repeated failures lower them. Let's consider a college boy taking calculus for the first time. At the very beginning, he is desperate about the course, but, as he studies he realizes that he can solve problems correctly. And thus, his self-efficacy about his mathematics skills increases, after a strong sense of self-efficacy is developed through repeated successes. Occasional failures are unlikely to have much effect on judgments of one's capabilities. The extent to which, people will change their efficacy through mastery experiences will depend upon, the difficulty of the task, the amount of effort, they expend, the amount of external aid, they receive, the circumstances under which they perform, and, the temporal pattern of their successes and failures. The second way of creating and strengthening self-beliefs of efficacy is, through the vicarious experiences provided by social models, seeing people similar to oneself succeed, by sustained effort raises observers' beliefs that, they also possess the capabilities to master comparable activities required to succeed, by the same token, observing others fail despite high effort diminishes observers' judgments of their own efficacy and undermines their efforts. The impact of modeling on self-efficacy is strongly influenced by perceived similarity to the models. The greater the assumed similarity, the more persuasive the model's successes and failures are. If people see the models as very different from themselves, their self-efficacy is not much influenced by the model's behavior. Let's visit our college boy again. He sees his classmates succeed in calculus. He compares himself to his friend and thinks that they are alike. Thus, he believes that he can also succeed in calculus, just like his friend. The third source of self-efficacy is verbal persuasion, and is widely used in order to persuade people to believe that they possess capabilities that will enable them to achieve what they seek. Social persuasion may be limited in creating long-lasting increases in self-efficacy, but it can contribute to successful performance, if the desired appraisal is within realistic bounds. People who are persuaded verbally that they possess the capabilities to fulfill given activities, are likely to put greater effort and sustain it than if they doubt about themselves and dwell on personal deficiencies when problems arise. Whether or not, one will depend on persuasory opinions is determined by, who the persuaders are, their credibility, and, how knowledgeable they are about the nature of the activities. The last source of self-efficacy, is one's physiological state. People also rely partly on their somatic and, emotional states while judging their capabilities. 
they interpret stress reactions and tension as signs of vulnerability to poor performance. Mood also affects people's judgments about their personal efficacy, just as positive mood enhances self-efficacy, melancholic mood diminishes it. Well, I guess that is mainly all about self-efficacy.